time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and in today's episode of Jerry Rick. I'm gonna show you guys how to create your own homemade filament filter for your 3D printer just with a couple of things you have laying around your house and it'll help to prevent clogs and feeding issues. So guys, stay tuned. All right, just in case some of you guys don't understand what I'm talking about when I refer to filament extrusion issues, I'll give you an example. This right here is a gramophone that I printed for my iPhone 6. And you can see this is a beautiful model. There's also a link down in the video description for it. But the first three printing attempts that I made resulted in these little guys. Basically drink coasters is what I like to call them. This one got all bent up because it was still hot when I took it off the build platform. But basically what happened is the print head just starts clogging and then it just starts printing in midair like this and, and nothing happens. Just overnight, it's just never moving filament. Same thing happened on this ring portion which was supposed to be the horn. It started out well enough but then it got clogged again. Now I have a highly dusty environment that I use my 3D printers in which is my garage. Now if you're in a hermetically sealed room, this filter really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if you're in an area where dust is an issue, you absolutely want to use a filament filter because if you don't, you end up with a lot of drink coasters and rings. All right, for this project, you're going to need a couple of things. The first thing is some open cell foam. Now, this is the squishy type of foam. It ranges in densities and it usually comes with packing material like from FedEx, UPS, and DHL. You can also use cushion foam like you'd find in your couch cushions. Now, this stuff is very, very soft and you can find it at pretty much any arts and craft store. It's very cheap. Or just cut a piece out of your couch cushion and then you can flip it over. I don't think anybody will notice. You're also going to need some kind of clamps. Now here I have a nice little tube full of little plastic clamps that I just picked up, I think from Harbor Freight. Um, but you can also use paper clips. You can use clothes pins. I mean, pretty much anything as long as it can pinch something together. Pinch. You're also going to need some kind of lubricant. <laughs> I recommend just using straight up vegetable oil, unless you're printing really high temperature filaments like ABS and polycarbonate. You can also use silicone oil, which is the stuff that you pretty much use for rebuilding shocks on RC cars. I personally find that the silicone oil works a little bit better, but it doesn't matter. The vegetable oil works just fine. And you will also need a sharp pair of scissors or bat knife. I'm just kidding. You can't use bat knife for this project. It's way too dull and you will cut yourself or, or not. It's it's not sharp anymore. Oh yeah, I should probably mention you need a 3D printer too because this project is kind of pointless unless you own one. Okay, to start, we're gonna cut out a little cube of this foam. Pretty easy to do. Now I also cut a little cube of the soft foam you can see here, and this is the denser foam. Now I found that the soft foam actually works better. So if you have something that's dense like memory foam or the open cell cushion foam, I find that it works better overall, but even the stiff foam like this works just fine. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna cut a crease down the center about halfway through the material. So they end up with like a little Pac-Man. Again, make sure you have sharp scissors. These scissors basically suck, so I have to cut a whole bunch. Mm. Okay, well we have a roll of filament here. This is just white PLA. And I'll show you kind of the premise here. So you take the little crease here and you put the filament right in between it. So you can see the filament passes through the center and it moves through it nicely. Ladies. Now the dense foam creates a little bit more drag, but that's gonna go away in the next step. All right, so the next step is you wanna take your vegetable oil, or as I prefer, the silicone oil, and you just wanna spread open that foam and just put a couple drops. I'm talking like four or five little drops, and then squish it together in your fingers so that it absorbs into the foam. Uh, best it can. Now you're gonna find on the denser foam it doesn't absorb as much in, so don't use as much. On the denser foam, maybe use like three drops. Mm. Mm. Now I would recommend that you guys re-oil these after huge 3D prints. I'm talking stuff that's like 15 or 20 hours. So the next step is to get yourself a clamp or a clothespin or some kind of pinching device. Lock, 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 lock. So you're just gonna take your filament, run it through the center of your filter block, and you can do this while it's loaded into the printer. That's why I like this method versus some of the other methods where you have to push the filament through the foam. So now you just go ahead and apply your clip. You wanna make sure that you do it kind of close to the filament, but you don't want it to basically pin the filament so it can't move freely. So make sure that the thing slides very nicely. Here, we'll throw the dense foam on there. Ugh. For this one, I need the big clamp. Actually, I need to cut the foam down a little. It was just a little too big. You don't want the block to be super huge because then it'll hang up and snag on things. But you also don't want it to be too small because then the 3D printer might suck it into the extruder and you don't want that. Perfect, now it slides pretty easy. Woo! 
Now the first thing you're gonna notice is the filament after the filter now will be nice and smooth because it has a light coat of oil. And that's the trick, you want a light coat of oil. You don't want this thing coming out with drops on it. Otherwise that's gonna screw up your 3D print. All right, so here we have some filament that's already loaded into the feeder and you can see how easy it is. You just take your little block that you have here and just slide it over the filament right up against, you wanna make sure it's right up against the feeder. And if you have a direct drive system that doesn't use a Bowden tube, literally just put it right on the print head before the filament goes into the feeder for the extruder. Now, as the printer loads the filament, it's gonna pull it through that filter, which is gonna give it that thin coat of oil, and it's also gonna filter any of the dust that's settled on the filament. Because you gotta realize, when you're printing, this filament moves really slow through the 3D printer. So if you have a lot of dust in the air, it'll actually like become like statically charged and like cling to that filament. And all it takes is just a little bit of dust to completely screw up your print. And I've had this happen so many times, Ever since I started doing this, I haven't had a clog. Now the lubrication helps the filter remove the dust more effectively, but another side effect of oiling the filament is that it oils the Bowden tube. Now if you have a 3D printer that uses a Bowden tube, which means the extruder drive over here is actually feeding the filament off the print head instead of having the motor, the stepper motor right on the print head like some printers, uh, it'll actually lubricate this Bowden tube and it'll greatly reduce the drag, which means even though you add a little more drag on the bottom by adding the filter, it, it actually reduces the drag drag in the Bowden tube by a massive amount. You can actually disconnect the tube and push the filament through yourself and you notice a huge difference between oiled filament and not oiled filament. Well guys, it really is that simple to build a filament filtration system for your 3D printer. I almost wonder why 3D printers don't come with this from the factory. Now I found since I started using this filament filtration method that I've greatly reduced the number of failed prints that I've had due to feeding or extrusion clogs. Now that is huge because filament is not cheap. You guys know a roll of filament can cost you anywhere from 30 to 60 bucks depending on what it is and if you end up failing on the last few layers of a full build volume project you just threw away a lot of money so this is a nice little insurance policy now a couple really quick caveats that I need to mention are make sure that the printer is feeding through the filter with minimal drag if you put too much drag on the filter depending on your printer it might literally suck the filter inside of the drive and you are gonna have a hell of a time trying to clean up that mess so make sure that the filament is moving very, very smoothly through it. Also, as always, if you guys have a better way to do this, please leave comments down below and let me know how I can improve on this method because obviously I am not the end all be all of knowledge on 3D printing. Just pretty damn close. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this episode of Jerry Rig, please slap a like on it down below. Also come over and tweet me on Twitter. I am at Barnacles. I'm also hosting a lot of giveaways for Steam game codes and I have an upcoming giveaway for an entire gaming system. So guys, please come over over and follow me on Twitter and be a part of that. Also, all of my Instagram, Facebook, and all that stuff is down in the video description. I post a lot of stuff to Instagram. If you guys want to see behind the scenes, for instance, like I'm doing with this video shoot and kind of go along with it and see what's happening before the video comes out, Instagram's the place to do that. All right, guys, until next time. Look, I'm a clown. <laughs> Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.